Hello and welcome to my channel. I was working on a painting program using web technologies, so I've developed a small program that would enable you to um, draw some pictures. Um, it's a very basic program, but I thought I'd uh, make a tutorial about that because uh, the experience was very fun, at least to me. So I'm going to show you what I have created. And if you want to watch up out the video for, for the process itself, then please feel free so. So I have a, um, you know, a normal HTML5 uh, file and I have some interface here where you can cho choose the type of object that you want to draw. I have sliders here that uh, enables you, enable you to change the colors that you want to draw by. Um, I have the canvas here, HTML5 canvas, and I have some indicators about the X and Y coordinates uh, on that canvas. So here, for example, I'm here at uh, almost 0, 0, 1, 1, somewhere, I, can, I have bad mouse. Okay, so 0, 0, 1, 1, and I have like 600 pixels by 400 pixels, okay? So now if you want to draw some points, you can do like that. For example, you can change the color to something more reddish like this. You want to draw a line, you can draw a line like this. Okay. Like this. Like that. Okay. You can uh, change the color again let's say you want something more green you can draw rectangles like that okay or you can draw circles for example here something like that like this okay right uh, you can clear everything so this is what i have created and it took me about like two days of research and trial and error so um, I'm going to I'm not going to create the program completely from scratch because I'm, I'm going to try another approach I'm going to show you actually the the whole code and I am going to explain to you what I have done and how did I created the code and uh, please let me know if you prefer me creating the, the whole program from scratch instead of explaining to you a an already completed code uh, so in the f future tutorials i might uh, change my uh, way of uh, explaining things right so i'll put this here <coughs> so what i have here is one index html5 i have one <coughs> styles uh, style sheets uh, file and I have, of course, one uh, J, uh, JavaScript file. So what I have done is this. <coughs> Sorry. So I have created a uh, normal HTML5 file where um, I have nothing strange there in the header. And in the uh, body part, I've created a div, which is a container class. Uh, and uh, I've created like, like, let me show this in front of you, like somehow. Um, I need to change my mouse, definitely. All right, all right anyway. So I have created uh, a group of radio buttons inside um, a div itself. And each radio uh, button is a certain, uh, has a certain ID, which for example, points, Freehand, yeah, I didn't show you the freehand. The freehand is something like this. Okay, so for example, let me something like that. Okay, right. You can create whatever you want, like this. Right. So um, I have a uh, freehand line, circle, and rectangle. So, and then I have a, another group uh, of uh, text, which is uh, uh, situated inside a div, uh, which is the red, green, blue labels, those, those labels, okay. And 
they have a certain uh, style or class which is inline or sliders as well and then I have three sliders which are the red green blue values the sliders are input buttons of type range and they start at uh, value 0 and end at value 255 they start at value 127 in the middle okay and each slide uh, slider is uh, controlling the red or green or blue light so and they have of course uh, the corresponding ids red green blue now uh, this thing is actually this is just a label that is describing to me the the value here you see this thing is just uh, describing me the red green blue value at the current moment so what else and i have also a button which clears uh, the canvas this button is responsible for clear clearing this uh, canvas object okay and I have also a heading element that is describing the current uh, location of the mouse over the canvas. For example, I have this. You see, it's changing according to the mouse. Right? So, um, of course, I'm reading the, the JavaScript file from a directory, uh, which is called scripts. It's here. And the main JS is the main JavaScript file. Um, this is for the uh, yeah and for the styles of course I'm reading the styles from uh, the uh, styles uh, directory and the file is called style CSS so for the styles I, the usual stuff you know for the body I have chosen the standard well, I would call them the standard uh, font uh, choice which is Arial Helvetica Sans Serif 16 pixels for the fonts as for the container I have chosen a uh, I have done a margin of 10 points and a padding of two points uh, and I have chosen the um, you know uh, the border to be solid so let me show you which one is that which is actually this so I have padding uh, as two, two points and the margin is 10 points okay all right so and the background color I, okay I, I don't I don't have any kind of great uh, color skills so I have chosen just a random color that uh, came into my mind any web designer that can choose something better than please do I, I don't have any aesthetic skills in that in that certain area I'm just uh, explaining how can you do the things that I have done here so as for the headings I have chosen also a margin of 10 points which is this guy and padding of two uh, for the toolbox which is this uh, actually wait toolbox is actually toolbox 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 yeah the unordered list the buttons is this together with the sliders okay so so what did we say toolbox display in line now I'm not sure why this is the case because ah yeah for the labels because I have the labels here so um yeah and uh because the item is an ordered uh, unordered list so I've uh, chosen to remove any decorations for the list uh, items and I have chosen to create them as uh, inline block because I have other uh, elements that are uh, like uh, inside the grid or something like that I mean they're not uh, mm, 
just above each themselves. Uh, I have also a great style of elements here, like the sliders and the labels that are corresponding to the sliders, for example. Uh, with the margin is zero, vertical align, I have uh, aligned them vertically in the middle so they can get here because otherwise if you if you remove this uh, property you will have them like stretched uh, down down to the uh, to the bottom now um for the other styles for the sliders in line okay I can see more than three two files. This is strange. Well, anyway, ah, yeah, here we go. So, um, slide for this D. Okay. Anyway, well. The main, the, the most important thing is the canvas uh, element here, and uh, I've created a margin of uh, 10 points, and I have chosen to uh, make the position relative, so the coordinates on the canvas will be relative to that uh, canvas. Uh, there is a problem here that I have discovered lately. If you choose to to if you want to specify the width and height of the canvas element inside the CSS, then that might get you a blurry text and the canvas itself might be stretched. It will revert to a default um, uh, dimensions of 300 and by 150. Okay, so you need you need to specify the dimensions of your canvas inside the declaration of the canvas element itself here. Okay. So here you need to say that your canvas width is 600 and your uh, the height is uh, 400. Okay. Um, okay. So yeah, as for the coordinates, which is the which is this. Uh, I've uh, made them aligned at the center so here because otherwise you will have them on the left side okay so uh, this is why you see them in the center aligned okay what else I need to tell you about the CSS here the square this is the square that displays you the current RGB color so it has like a 1550 dimensions. The background color is something. Ah, that's the um, the center of the color. The uh, the middle values of the RGB. So the grayish uh, color that you have seen. And margin of the top is 20 pixels. To the left is about 50 percent because um, because otherwise it would be stretched to the left as well. Okay, so I have chosen that to be like at almost 50%, 48%. Okay. So the same for the list items. They have to be vertically aligned in the middle so they don't get stretched to the bottom. And now I can like start to explain the real functionality. Okay. So all right, so coming to the JavaScript file, uh, the canvas is named uh, as main canvas. So I'm caching this element at the start of the file, like I'm getting this file, uh, the canvas element uh, right after, uh, like tra traversing the, the 
HTML file and take a the canvas element here. So I don't have to traverse the DOM file again, the DOM uh, structure again. I'm getting a, co a context. If you want to draw to the shapes from a, the canvas element, then you have to specify the type of the context that you want uh, on each uh, canvas element. If you want to use WebGL, for example, for 3D graphics, you need to specify that this context is, a, is made for 3D graphics or for WebGL. In our case, the context is only 2D, okay? So we are going to do only 2D drawings. Uh, I'm specifying a starting position and an ending position and a current position. Um, now, for the freehand, uh, I'm caching this element because I don't want to traverse the, for the same reason, I don't want to traverse the DOM uh, too many times. Okay, so I'm caching the element uh, that is uh, the radio button that is defining me the freehand. So also I'm caching the red slider, the green slider and the blue slider. And I'm creating a function here that returns to me a text representation together with the RGB values that I have. Okay, so because um, in the uh, canvas element when you want to specify a, um, a color, uh, then you have to specify it as a string uh, literal instead of uh, a value okay so for that so for that purpose I need a function that returns me a string representation but using the RGB function that is built in, in, in HTML5 now I have a function here that is a uh, returning to me the current position of the mouse over the uh, canvas now uh, the 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 if you if you don't do this, the way I have done it here, okay, you will get a uh, mouse position that is relative to the whole client uh, window, to the whole window of the browser. So this is the, this is a way uh, to uh, make the uh, the position that you are getting a relative just to the canvas itself. Okay, so what I'm doing here is that I'm getting the bounding client rect, which is a function. Uh, you get the bounding client rect of the canvas itself, okay, and you get it in the form of a rectangle. Now, you have the event uh, object here, which has inside itself the client uh, coordinates, but these client coordinates are transformed, so, so you want to transform them back to the uh, origin of the uh, canvas object. So in that case, you just uh, subtract the uh, the global coordinates that you have okay uh, from the client x so in that case uh, you get the right coordinate and of course you um, uh, divide this uh, by the difference of the uh, well actually this is the width and ha height of the uh, bounding recta rectangle okay and that uh, you you uh, multiply this with the actual width of the canvas uh, if your canvas is uh, scaled actually so so this is a formula that you you can get uh, you can use to get the accurate uh, position of the mouse over the canvas but of course i have to sail this down to make it uh, an integer value because otherwise you will have a very long uh, double uh, number that will make your canvas uh, jump and, and uh, become blurry and, and, and do some strange things so uh, of course I have added a mouse listener uh, for the when you press the button when you press uh, the left mouse button um, and again you call the mouse position so you need the position of the mouse when you click the, bu the button without releasing the button then you ha you need to uh, save the coordinates of the mouse at that point into some starting uh, position okay uh, because when you if you if you click the button and you move your mouse and then release the button then the coordinates have changed and you want you want probably to reflect you want definitely to reflect uh, that change into your code for example 
you want to draw a circle, right? So you click at the cent you click at a point uh, uh, on the canvas, and that point represents, for example, the center of the circle. But you drag the mouse without releasing the button, okay? And that um, determines the radius of the circle. So when you uh, release the circle in the end, okay, uh, the uh, program draws a circle with the radius that you have defined. So I have added a uh, event listener for the mouse move message, uh, the event. And again, I'm using the same uh, function, the get mouse position um, with the canvas as uh, this and the event that is generated. Okay. And uh, yeah, I'm getting the, uh, the HR, the header. Okay, so because I need to, the, um, how do you call it, uh, to reflect the mouse uh, movement uh, onto the canvas, so you can display. Let me show you. So you can display. So you can display these coordinates here. Okay. So this is how I'm doing this. Of course, you you get the uh, header three, you get the inner HTML, and you assign this string to that. Okay, so you have the only thing here is that uh, the, the the position X and position Y. Now, here is the thing: um, if you if you are just like that, if you are just moving your mouse uh, over the canvas without pressing any button, then nothing will happen. Okay, so if you test for the button that you have if you press a button and that at but that button is uh, your left mouse button then you have to test whether it is uh, pressed or not the event dot which property the which property is uh, specifying whether you have pressed the left button or not if which is one okay that means the left mouse button has been pressed now the left the left button has been pressed i need to check whether the freehand radio button has been checked as well or not because for example okay so let's say i have point let me press i pressed okay now i'm pressing okay so i'm, I'm dragging the mouse while pressing the button but nothing is happening here because the free hand is not uh, checked so i release i get a, a, a dot that is drawn at the previous uh, coordinate okay uh, the same thing for the line okay i have a line i i press the button i move nothing happens until i release the button okay so i have a line to the actual uh, to the last position of the mouse from the starting position of the uh, mouse okay but here in this case i need to check the free hand button in order to execute the procedure for uh, drawing uh, in a freestyle mode okay so for example i have this free hand let me change the, the the color a bit okay so i have now pressed uh, pressed the free hand if i click i see something okay so i can start drawing okay right so what is happening here is this I'm uh, I'm getting the color from the sliders, and the color from the sliders is no, it's not that. Okay. Yeah, I get color here. So um, um, wait, get color. Yeah, okay. So uh, since I have cached the red, uh, the sliders, the red slider, green slider, and blue slider, okay, uh, I'm I'm getting the uh, color values uh, using the get color uh, function, okay. So I have these sliders here, uh, and each slider has a property called value, okay. So I'm getting a uh, an array called RGB, which has the uh, the R and G and B values, okay. So I'm returning that as a color okay now i have the rgb values here but i need a string representation of that so i'm calling the other uh, function the rgb function here okay which is this guy okay 
which is returning to me a string representation with the correct values. So, uh, since we have a context for the canvas, which is the 2D context, you can use a uh, property called fill style, where you add your string representation of the color that you have chosen. Okay, so here you 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 could, you could do something like this here, for example. Um, uh, let's say I don't know F F E E two two for example. Okay, you can do something like that. Okay, uh, but uh, yeah, of course it must be a uh, string representation like this. Okay, but in our case we are using the RGB function and we are returning uh, um, RGB values. So you have the fill style and the stroke style. The stroke style is the um, the the edge, the silhouette of the pattern that you are trying to draw. Okay, so or the borders of the shape that you are trying to draw. Okay, now if you want to draw stuff on the canvas, you need to use the begin path function. Okay, in this case. Uh, you are you saying you are telling the canvas okay now I'm going to be to to draw a shape so begin a path and the path of choice in this case okay is a an, an arc which is drawing in this case is drawing a circle okay that has only a radius of one that is starting at angle zero and that is making a full circle turn with 2 multiplied by pi okay of course the center is at position y position x and position y position x and position y is the actual mouse position at this point okay and then you tell the canvas stroke which means now you can flush your uh, drawing onto the canvas okay now for the mouse up uh, event um, as well I'm still continuing to, to receive my current position okay but when you when you actually release the mouse button you need to assign the current position as the end position okay and then you go and handle your canvas now if you want to handle your canvas um, yeah here so what I'm saying here is this I'm getting all the radio buttons that I have that I need well except for the freehand because the freehand is uh, handled up there in the mouse move but here in this case I'm getting the point line circle and rect uh, radio buttons and I'm checking whether they are pressed or not whether they are checked or not okay if the point is checked okay then I'm drawing a point if the line is checked then I'm drawing a line if the, C, if the circle is checked, then I'm drawing a circle, and if the rectangle is checked, I'm drawing a rectangle. Now, what's happening here is the same as in the mouse move uh, situation, but um, I'm getting the starting position, which are cached above. The, these are almost a global. Uh, the, the, these are global uh, positions. I'm getting the uh, square, uh, the color square, because I need the background, the color that is stored there, and it's the background color in this case. But never mind, because we are using, uh, we are just transferring the value from the square to the uh, pen to the canvas. So I'm getting the color, and as the same as uh, above, I'm, I'm assigning the fill style and the stroke style. Okay, they are the same. You can extend that. You can do something different. You can assign different values here, and you can get uh, a, another type of uh, brush. And then I'm saying uh, begin path because okay, there is no no point uh, geometrical primitive uh, in canvas. So I'm substituting point with an arc. Okay, uh, I'm creating a circle. Uh, which has also the radius uh, 1 and that starts uh, at angle 0 and makes a full flip, full turn for uh, a circle. The false here means whether you are uh, drawing in a counter uh, clockwise or a uh, clockwise uh, manner. 
so false means clockwise and again use your saying now close uh, the path and flush the drawing to the screen okay now this uh, draws you only one point okay of course you can you can you can change the radius here so you can change the thickness of the pen that you are using for example if you put here like i don't know five or something like that okay then your your um, point will be a big uh, bigger point okay uh, for the line of course you need the starting point which you have already cached by uh, the mouse uh, press mouse down uh, event you get the color the same as above you put the stroke color you assign the uh, stroke color by the color that you have got from the square you begin the path now uh, on the context you move to the point to the starting point where you want to start your line and then you tell the canvas to draw a line until the end point and if the end point is defined uh, when you release your button okay and then again you tell the canvas okay stroke close the path and show me the, the drawing draw circle is almost the same as uh, drawing an arc you take the color from the square now you have to define the radius because the, the radius in this case is defined by the starting point and the ending point when you press the, bu the button uh, the mouse button you start the um, you define the starting the center of the circle okay when you release the button you define the radius of the circle and how do you define the absolute value of the radius i mean the amount of the uh, radius it's by the actually uh, taking the deltas the d delta x uh, squared uh, plus the delta uh, y squared and you create a uh, you get the root of them okay the square root so when you create the square root uh, of this uh, distance you get uh, the radius and you can uh, of course you choose the fill stay style uh, and the stroke style the, the color that you want to use and then again you say begin path you want to draw an arc in this case it's a circle but it's you choose the center of the circle which is start x and start y you choose the the radius of the circle and again you have zero starts at angle zero and it makes a complete turn okay and you tell the circle to fill this is uh, the command that makes you uh, fill your circle with the certain color okay and then you tell the canvas to close the uh, path and flush the drawing on the screen the same for drawing a rect okay you get the color you choose the fill style as that color and then you use the command fill rect fill rect starts with the starting point of the uh, rectangle and the width of the rectangle and the height of the rectangle okay so in this case it's end x minus start x that's the width uh, and end y minus start y that's the height and then you tell the canvas to close the path and flush the drawing and that's actually it um i think so yeah of course you add an event listener for the sliders here and the uh, the event is called input okay so it's on input so when you um, when you change the sliders for when you change these sliders okay you generate an event called input okay and you call the handle mouse function for that the handle mouse function again okay we, we discussed that that already uh, yeah it just assigns the the chosen color okay to the square okay and that's it so i think that's it okay of course uh, the code is on my github page so if you want to download that and take a look at that please feel free to do so um for me, I think 
advance it. Of course, this program is just a you know a simple demonstration about uh, what you can do with the canvas uh, object. It can be this program can be extended without any limits. I mean, you can create something very similar to Photoshop if you want, if you know how to. Okay, so so uh, this is a very uh, useful uh, thing that you can use for your own purposes, whatever it is. For example, you can create a sprite engine here. Uh, you can manipulate images. Okay, you, you can do a lot of things. So that's it. Um, anything else I need to say? No, I don't think so. All right. So thank you for watching and have a good, have a nice evening. See you later.